our next speaker is Sam's business partner and is an international authority on all things social media, marketing and lead generation. With an online network of over 150,000 contacts, he specialises in helping businesses make money online. Digital marketing is complicated by most. Our speaker looks to simplify it to a point where anyone and everyone can implement it. Please welcome to the PSA Southeast stage, Chris Taylor. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to drive up, or di drive down the M25 to, the, to this event this evening. I found out at 8 o'clock this morning that Sam was, Sam was unwell. And she panically messaged to say, what are you up to this evening? And I was a bit sitting there just like, well, actually, I was planning on watching Morocco versus Spain and then <laughs> having a glass of sobbing on and then kind of going to bed. That was my night. But do you know what? The PSA was something that I was introduced to about two years ago now. I was just speaking to Courtney and, um, and Ben just before. I went to a PSA event in Derby. I think it was Derby or not. It was Sam's local one. And it was my first exposure to public speaking. It's not something that I've ever felt comfortable doing. For speakers out there that are just getting started, I was the um and the ara and the person that just didn't feel comfortable whatsoever with doing it. However, learning how to do this has been like the best thing I've ever done from learning how to stand in front of people from room sizes of like three when I ran my first masterclass through to speaking at events that have got 500 to 600 people on. It's just something that I never thought was quite real. And my, I guess, speaking journey took a real, real big turn when lockdown hit. And I suddenly went from speaking in rooms of people to generate business to start thinking about how could I take it online? And that was kind of where our business really took off because LinkedIn's something that Sam's done since I was in primary school. Don't tell her that, she'll absolutely <laughs> kill me. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's true, she's been doing this way before I ever got into business, and I don't dare to ever proclaim to be the expert that she is on this subject, but my thing has all been about, from when I first started my, my business, which was a property company originally, through to selling that company and moving into social media marketing, it's been about how do I turn the awareness and the attention that I can generate for free and monetize it? I've been the kid that sat in a bedroom making money for the last four years, and now I get to share how we do it to rooms like this. And that's kind of what today is about. It's a, it's a presentation that, that I deliver all over the country. It's something that is really, really close to my heart because I just feel that people really do overcomplicate this stuff. Um, just out of interest, who's actively using a social media platform to generate business currently, right? Look around the room, pretty much everyone's hands are up. You'd have asked that three to four years ago, would have been a completely different result. And I say that from someone that used to travel the country speaking, and people would look at me like I'd gone absolutely mad when I tell them that TikTok's the next best thing. Mm -hmm. People still do it, but actually you look at these platforms and, and the way that they're growing, opportunity has never been bigger. And now is the time to be able to really capitalize on what that is when you understand how these platforms work. And LinkedIn's what I'm gonna be talking to you about tonight. I'm going to introduce you to the platform, how it works, and most importantly, how you can turn these things called connections into leads and then into sales at the back end, because that's the biggest thing for me. People waste so much time on social scrolling. There'll be people that are most likely already picking up their phones and scrolling now, right, in regards to it. It always happens, but how do you turn that screen time into money? And over the past two and a half years of working with Sam, I spend lots of time on the phone talking to people, right? Having one-to-one -one conversations like I'm sure lots of you do as well. And there are some key reasons that come up time and time again as to why people struggle to be able to turn the time that they spend on social into money. Number one is that the stuff that they're communicating, the, the content that you're creating, the message that you're putting out there Although you may think it's what people want to hear, and I don't mean to say this to annoy anyone or piss anyone off, right? it's not me whatsoever. However, what we've got to do is find a way to be able to emotionally engage people. And that's what I'm going to be touching upon in part one of tonight's session. It's how can you connect and get your ideal clients, your prospects, your connections to actually pay attention to what you're saying. Because if you're saying it, it most likely is important but the way that you frame it now, and I'm going to show you an example of this as we go through, it's got to be done in such a clever way to earn the screen time and the attention that you know that you deserve. 
Number two is a harsh truth to admit sometimes, but if you open up your social media profiles and you scroll, this was something that I had to admit to myself right at the beginning. I wasn't somebody that was worth following in the first place. The stuff that I was posting was boring, right? It was vanilla, it just didn't work. It didn't stop people in their scroll. So I spent a lot of time with Sam, with Nick, my other business partner, with our team now, looking at everything that stops me in my scroll. So when I'm on that platform, there's anything that flashes up and grabs my attention, I wanna work out what it is. How can I utilize and capitalize on it and put it into my content? Because I know if they're getting me to stop scrolling, then there's something in it that I can use as well. Number three is a big one that I always hear. It's like, look, I'm posting online, I'm, I'm engaging, I'm sending messages, I'm building my network, I'm doing all these things, but the problem is my audience just isn't big enough right now. I don't have consistent traffic coming through to actually pay attention and really want to speak to me. Most speakers, right, whenever, whenever I have conversations with them, like, I get to see how passionate they are, how enthusiastic they are, how like, connected they are to what they do. But the problem is they've not got enough people to talk to. And so what I want to show you about is how can you generate the attention? How can you post the content that's going to boost your impressions, boost your connections, and then boost everything else as a result? Number four is the bit that most people find boring. I find quite sexy, to be fair. However, it's around process. Now, process is something that every business person, I guess, talks about when you're looking to grow systems, processes, automation, right? Something everybody talks about. But when I look into most people's businesses, and I'm gonna show you examples of this in a second, and it links really nicely into number five. They don't have an actual strategy. Now, strategy, if Nick's watching this on the camera at home afterwards, right, he hates the word strategy because everyone throws it around and says they've got one. Most people don't. Um, Nick's one of the most successful <coughs> business people. You'll get to see him later on in content as we go through. That's the most successful business people you'll ever meet. And he has drilled down and put me on a lead for the last three years. So actually focusing on one specific strategy to get it right. And that's delivering this message home because the reality is after speaking to 1,200 plus businesses on this subject, the biggest mistake most people make is that if they just keep posting, if they just keep showing up, if they just keep sending messages, building networks, being visible, that eventually it will just happen. And the problem is that's a strategy that's based on hope and hope is not something in marketing that we actually want or even desire whatsoever. It's a nice to have. What I wanna know is if that I can put in a thousand new connections every single month. That's gonna convert 50% to come to a webinar or come to an event where I'm speaking at, which will mean that another 50% will actually be interested and 10% will convert. I'm gonna show you that process end to end. You can take a picture of it and you can take it away. It's a process that you can implement as speakers into your business to start utilizing this attention as we go through. In terms of what we're gonna cover, I've split it into three sections to break it down, to make it really, really simple. Part one is going to be around clarity, getting clear on your message. Part two is going to be around how do you connect that message to actually build an audience. And then number three, really simply, how do you turn the audience into money? That sound good? Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Good. So I know you don't really care about this too much, right? So it's there for you just to quickly have a glance at. And the biggest thing for me is that I'm living and breathing this stuff today. So if you check out my LinkedIn profile, if you check me out on Instagram, if you check me out on Facebook, wherever, I've built an audience on that platform. Every single platform there is out there, I've tried and tested it to death to be able to get the audience that I needed to be able to grow a company. Four years ago, I had no business experience whatsoever, nothing. And I'm proud to stand here today, actually, after that, after growing a property company, it going horribly wrong, and me having to exit it out of the back end to then growing a social media agency, and now going in and kind of having an educational arm to what we do as well. And we've done amazing things. And the thing that's most important is we've never stayed still. The information that me and Sam were talking about three years ago is completely different now. Because the way that these platforms are changing, if you don't change with it, unfortunately you're going to get left behind. And that's why I'd spend so much time speaking about this stuff. So whether it's building an audience of millions of people, whether it's making money, whatever, we're doing this now and you can do the exact same thing if you get these key fundamental things right. Now the first question that always comes up, Sam gets this in her inbox all the time, is why LinkedIn? Out of any platform you could choose, 
Why this platform? For me, there's three key reasons. Number one is this thing called organic reach. So if you're looking at social media platforms right now, um, out of interest, is anyone using Facebook just for, at this current point in time? Personal, not Personal, not business. What about Instagram? Yeah. Okay, great. Snapchat, all the hands go down. Great. TikTok. Okay, if you on TikTok. YouTube. Okay, that's a nice result. I like that. That's good. Who's using LinkedIn right now? The majority. Great. So LinkedIn was a platform. So I've got around about 39,000 followers on Instagram right now. It was a platform that I started my first company. That was the platform that I focused on. Instagram, three years ago, booming platform. Completely ridiculous in terms of the reach that I got. I grew to naught, literally it was around 500 friends and family followers to 10,000 in about six months. And when I think about it, I had no idea why people were following me. I was posting my property journey at the time. Some odd people found it interesting and it took off. Now, when you do that and you get that sort of growth that quickly, people start to ask you, like, how did you do it? And I couldn't quite frankly sit there and go, I don't know. So I started to look into what we were doing. 10,000 turned into 20,000 turned into 30,000. And then what happened was after COVID left us, Apparently it might be coming back, I'm not gonna say that too loudly, but everyone's got colds these days at the moment. Um, but when, when that hit, Instagram released this thing called Instagram Reels. I don't know if anyone's heard of them. Um, now, Instagram Reels changed the way that Instagram worked. And for me, um, it's why I'm not, I love TikTok, but I'm not a creator of it. I, I force myself to, but I can't dance, horrendous, you don't wanna see it. I can't mime and I can't sing. So that as a platform was not something that I was immediately attracted to. However, still plays a huge role right now. I just wasn't the short form creator that that platform wanted. And Instagram made that shift. So my organic reach dropped. So I went from reaching 100,000 people every single week to reaching around 3,000 with 38,000 followers. That was the drastic shift that Instagram made. So me as a business person, I was looking at it. I was like, well, how do I pivot? How do I keep the attention? Because I need to keep my business going. What do I do? I met Sam and LinkedIn became the thing that I wanted to talk about. And it's still there today. Across the majority of these platforms, your ability to reach people for free is reducing. On LinkedIn right now, it is reducing. This is why it's so important to take advantage of this opportunity right now. For me, from a business to business point of view, this is common sense. Everyone using LinkedIn will be nodding their heads at this. But from a B2B point of view, it is the easiest way to generate leads. The ability to be able to search for certain job titles, for certain company sizes, to be able to be able to start conversations with key decision makers in companies, you can't do that on Instagram. You can't do it on Facebook. You can't do it anywhere else. So this is where the opportunity lies. This is quite amusing when you look at the stats behind it, if you're a geek like me anyway it is. If you look at the shift and the transition from LinkedIn user behavior, this used to be a very, very strict business professional platform. Now people are on this at eight o'clock at night scrolling next to the other halves and they're on something else doing the exact same thing. People are using this platform more now than they ever have done before. And therefore, there's more attention out there for you to be able to get because there's more time being spent on it. And when you get this right, when you post the content that the platform wants, not what you want to create, but what the platform wants, you have the ability to reach hundreds of thousands of people without spending a penny. To give you the context of this, we run paid advertising for our company, right? To be able to reach 100,000 people that fit our ideal demographic on Facebook and Instagram costs us about three and a half thousand pounds a month. You can do that for free on this platform. And I use them all. This is the one that is giving us the most targeted attention right now without having to spend a penny on any media whatsoever. Some of you might not care about it, but for those of you that are wanting to grow next year, this platform is there for you to be able to do it. Connecting with your ideal clients is number the reason number two. So you will all have a different target market in mind. You'll be after certain decision makers within companies. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you'll have certain people that you want to target. LinkedIn gives you the ability to be able to go out, find them, press connect, and we are encouraged to accept. On Instagram, if I go and follow someone, I have to earn the right for them to follow me back. On LinkedIn, we all just want more connections. So it's just like accept as quick as you can. So you, earn the, you get the attention so much easier. 
If you're not building your network on LinkedIn right now by just going out, searching for your ideal client and pressing connect at this point, point in time, you're missing out on opportunity to be seen. Something so simple, spend five minutes a day doing it. It's all it takes me, connect, max out your connections, which is around about 30 to 50 a day, and you're on to starting to build an audience for yourself that will reap the rewards, you will reap the rewards for next year, three months time on average. And then with the right campaign type, and this is the bit that I'm gonna focus on for like the, the conversion part of today, right? LinkedIn gives you certain tools to use, which I did not know about two years ago. I wish I'd started using them earlier. Um, however, when you utilize them in the right way, you have the opportunity to be able to convert very, very quickly. Now, I'm always quite conscious to say this stuff is easy. However, nothing that I'm gonna to talk to you about right now is gonna be rocket science. You're gonna look at me and go, is he really saying this? But genuinely, it is that simple in terms of the way that we do it. Now, this specific type of campaign that we run on LinkedIn, Sam's got a new book coming out this month in a couple of weeks' time. And it's all around campaigning, something that we talk about a lot um, within our agency and within our education stuff. Now, if you are just sending random direct messages to people now, trying to have conversations, and that is your only approach, then unfortunately, what you're gonna be doing is pushing people away. Now more than ever, our inboxes are being spammed, left, right, and center, whether it's email or LinkedIn, whatever, and we're responding to less and less. So what we need to do is think of a way of being able to still build relationships with people without having to rely on just one direct message being opened. And the way that we do it is by LinkedIn events right now. And now I don't know if any of you run workshops or webinars in here, right, but it plays a massive part in our strategies as speakers. So Sam does it, I run it in the exact same way. We both run one a month. And what we're able to do just by the invite functionality on LinkedIn right now is be able to proactively invite people, making them aware of this event. Now that's just one example of last year where we got a thousand people for free to say yes to come into an event just by inviting three weeks out. This for me is still not utilized enough. Like we are still getting 400 to 500 people every single time. You can go to my profile now, go type in Chris Taylor Pipeline 44. You will see I'm a week away from running my next event, which is next Thursday. And we've got over 200 people said yes to attending that event. To give you the statistics behind that, I'm gonna go into them in more detail for you shortly. But out of that 200, I can expect 100 of them to register and I can expect 10% of them to convert because of the way that the process works. So for every 100 people that we get saying yes to this, it's around five new clients every single month. That is not insignificant when you're looking at what the attention is available on social right now. It's just by sending some invites to a LinkedIn event. So something to think about if you're not currently utilizing them. And can I just quickly ask a question? Of the percentage that read, of the 100 that register, how many yeah. actually turn up? Around 50% of them. So 50 of them will show up. And then that's where the 10% conversion comes from, from taking you to the five new clients every month. From that. So part one, to go through, the, get straight into this um, for you. This is around messaging. Now, I've created got 20 or 30 videos on messaging online. I'm not gonna spend all day talking about it for you. I just wanna highlight some key significant parts. The reality is with social right now, you have to earn the, earn the right for people's attention. You have to fight for it. And the way that we do this is by working out what people react to. So when I speak to people, again, on those consultation calls, designing strategies for people, we can select a few people that they would classify as like hot prospects and we just go and start conversations with them. And we say, let's say you are a leadership consultant, right? Let's say that's what you do. Um, we will go to their prospect and go, just out of interest, if you were gonna choose a leadership consultant to work with right now, who would you pick? Nine times out of 10, it's not the person that is actually targeting them. Again, not insignificant. What you've gotta be is be the one out of the 10 that people remember when they get asked who it is that they're looking for. When it comes to content, we're gonna go into this in a second in a bit more detail, but most people default to giving lots and lots of information. Lots and lots of value is a word that we hear time and time again, just give value, just give value. The problem is, is that everybody's been doing that for the last four to five years, and there's more information out there now than there ever has been before. So what happens is people don't know who to listen to. And what happens is because of that, they end up listening to no one and being completely out of touch and ignore the content altogether. 
I did a post literally about two weeks ago highlighting this point that high value content no longer gets to reach the impressions that it used to. It's purely because people are no longer interested in it. Because if they're looking for an answer for something, they don't spend it and look for it on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook, they go straight to YouTube. They type it in and they find the video for it. So therefore, information is not the answer. No one cares about it. So what do they care about? Something we're going to talk about. When it comes to the strategy of working out what you need to be talking about, the first place to start, and again, you can take a photo of this. I can send the slides to you. You've got the slides. Send them out to everybody if you like. Um, but it's about understanding where your prospects are on, in your LinkedIn network right now. How aware are they of the problem that you solve? This is the starting point for everything. What we realize, I'm just going to highlight you because it's quite small, but when we look at all of the businesses that we service, most people's prospects sit in the fact that they don't even know that they've got the problem said person solves, or they know about it, but they have no idea how to solve it. Therefore, it's not really a priority because there's no, always another fire to put out. And what happens is if you're not putting out messaging that shocks and awes and grabs attention, and you do what most businesses do, which think that everybody's looking for the solution that they provide. Unfortunately, people don't spend any time watching you, listening to you. They, again, leadership is a prime thing, right? It's so, so important. But if you start talking about solutions to leadership problems for people that don't care about it, they ignore it. How do you make them care? How do you get them to really, really buy into what you're saying to give you the time so you can move them down the awareness ladder to the point where it's like, look, I need to work with you to solve this problem because you've highlighted how much of a real like, issue it is inside of my company. This is a journey that we take people on throughout our sales process. And it's the science that make everything's wor everything works. And as you go through it, it's all about the language that you're using and the way that you frame the content that you're creating. Like whether it's in podcasting or YouTube, you've, what you've got to do is engage the person to the point where it's like they're needing to really work with you. And then selling is no longer selling. They're already in. You've just got to provide them with the opportunity to buy. And it's this journey that you've got to take people on. And as you go through this, what you've got to look at is on the right hand side, the message type that you've got to use to be able to move people through. So on a webinar, as an example, what I look to do is wake people up to the mistakes that they're making online. It's a shock and awe message. It's to make them sit there and realize, almost nod their heads to go, I know I'm making that problem. I know I'm making that mistake. What I then do is put my arm around them virtually and go, it's not your fault because you've actually been completely overcrowded with noise to make you think that all of these other things are the answer. I'm going to show you this in a second in exactly the way that I'm describing it. When I can get the, give that empathetic approach, it showcases that we care about solving the problem. Because we've raised the awareness, people then want to come close, they want to work with us. And from that, we prevent the service and let's get it done and we move. So for each and every one of your businesses, there'll be a message that you can put out there that's going to grab the attention, that's going to shock, that's going to really, really make people care about it. Then you've got to highlight, show that you want to solve the problem with them. Make sure it's not their fault. Make sure they feel like it's not their fault and you're a supporter and move people through. Um, this is, again, quite small for you to be able to read, but this is so, just somebody that goes through this process with us, who first of all started messaging, he has a consultancy, helps people gain more business, right? That's what he does, he runs a cleaning agency, helps cleaning companies build their cleaning businesses. And he thought that the biggest problem cleaning companies had was gaining more business. So he put that message out there. It's like, you're struggling to generate leads, struggling to generate sales, I can help you do it got tumbleweed. What he realized after speaking to people was that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the thing that these people were thinking. The biggest issue was hiring and finding enough cleaners to be able to work inside of their companies. That was the biggest issue. He changed their message and leads started to come in. Same content, just framed in a different way because he was talking, about the, talking in the language that his prospects needed to be able to make a decision. Something really, really important. And from that, clients then came with it as well, because when you start talking about the stuff that matters, that's where we start to move with all of this. So what we need to look at is how do we identify what it is that's going to help make our service relevant? How do we take people from not aware of the problem to suddenly wanting to solve it and solve it quickly? Certain questions that you can ask yourself. Number one 
is understanding really, really business basics here, marketing basics, but why your customer should buy from your business in the first place. Why you? I can give you our answer because out of all of this stuff, sometimes I waffle when I talk, right? You're probably already experiencing this right now. However, when it comes to creating a marketing strategy, there is no nonsense. There is no going away from the plan. We set the plan, you follow it, you get results. So if you're looking for leads into your company, that's why you work with us. If you're struggling with that problem, we deliver it. I asked the question to all of you, why should people work with you? What is the key reasons? What problem do you really solve? The second question is something that every single person, in my opinion, should have on their website, landing pages, and should be talking about it within content, within messaging, everywhere. It's when is the right time to buy? Most people, when we look at their pipelines, they have warm leads that sit in them. And the reason why they're not buying is because they don't know when the right time is. So educating them on that process is something that you can really do in any online presentation that you give, in any content that you create, it's just about talking about it and vocalizing it to them. So for us, as an example, with lead generation, if you suddenly make the decision today to start generating leads for your company and you get an extra five qualified leads into your business, what's the average sale that you might make? Okay, let's say two grand. Even if we confirmed one of those a month, that's an extra 2,000 pounds every single month. You delay that for six months, it's a 12 grand opportunity cost there that you've lost. You highlight the urgency to make the decision whether you're in recruitment in the same way. What's the cost of getting the right hire now versus in six months time? You highlight it in your messaging and you educate people on when the right time is to buy in your marketing. You tell them, suddenly they start to listen and again, you'll start to move people closer to a transactional decision. That third question there is where you start to really get people moving. And it's, if they don't decide to make the decision to work with you now, where, what are the consequences going to be? What are they going to suffer with? What's the pain point? That's where pain comes in, right? People start with pain without people actually understanding what the problem is. Highlight the problem, the consequences, that will drive your pain in your language when you're communicating online. And then the last question there is understanding what it is that these people need to hear and again, all of you will have different answers to this, right? I don't mean to send you into overwhelm with like, the thinking that you need to do, but all of the stuff that you're putting out there matters. You're leaving first impressions. So it's really important to get this stuff right. And then from there, you'll start to gain the momentum that you deserve from it. So what is it that they need to hear? Now, Sasha, a lady that we worked with, is a virtual assistant, right? So she does administration, she does like diary management, all that sort of stuff. Now, when we started working with her, this is a real common thing in this market. I don't know if we have it, you know a virtual assistant, right, in, in the world, but they're fighting over hourly rates. That's how they win business. One person's 15 pound an hour, then I'll discount to 12, then I'll discount to 10, and suddenly they're on minimum wage. But that's how this market works. Most people are at, like exporting overseas now as well for it to reduce hourly rates even further. When I started working with her, I was literally like, look, you can't do this. You've got to frame what you do in a different way. So we packaged her up is rather than being a virtual assistant into an actual outsourcing agency service, which then put her clients onto retainers and showcased the results and what made her different. She had a social media service, she had a HR service, and she had a legal team that she recruited specifically for with certain virtual assistants. And from that revenue came because she repackaged the exact same stuff that she was doing, but just repackaged it in a slightly different way, started talking about it online and leads came in. So again, take the moment to think about what it is that you do and start to what, like, just ask yourself, is there a way that you can slightly reframe it? Or is there someone that you can have a conversation with in a room like this that can just help you reframe what you're doing differently to make it more appealing? And from that, you'll start to gain more traction with what you're doing. <coughs> so just some top tips that you can take a photo of and you can take them away with you. But like when it comes to messaging, like the biggest thing for me is that point two and point three on there for you. Like, it is the biggest shortcut to finding out what you need to be talking about is actually to take the time to go and talk to your clients. We did this with a number of ours to help with our messaging. We used to talk about, if you look back at our content over like the last year, prospect engaging and posting. They were the three things that we always used to talk about. What we realized was, was the fact that everyone else was now talking about that as well. 
So we started to blend in, even though that we were the people that came up with that framework. Sam always used to talk about giving a pep talk, prospect engage post, that was how we did it. But the problem was everyone else was doing it. So we went to our customers and went, look, can you just answer the question? Like, what problem do we actually solve for you? Now, for us, it's really easy. You'll have a lot of interesting answers if you go to that, especially if you're dealing with people that aren't directly involved. So a typical example, we have someone that works with IT um, professionals. And he goes into departments in, in IT and he works with the head of IT. However, the decision maker is the CEO. So he actually has to ask the CEO what problem he's solving. And it's nothing technical whatsoever. It's actually, you just keep my IT department off my back. That was the problem that he saw. Change his message to go, is your IT department driving you absolutely insane with these queries? If so, reach out, bang, inquiries come in. Because he starts talking the language of the person he's trying to connect with. Does that make sense? Really, really simple stuff I know, but it's really important because when you start to get into the nitty gritty detail of this, that's where the magic happens. And that moves us into part two of all this, which is around connecting the LinkedIn activity. I know I've not spoken too much about LinkedIn yet. It's coming. I promise you. But the thing is that you need to know right at the front end is nothing that you do on LinkedIn matters unless you get that bit right. You'd just be wasting your time. And I know that sounds quite harsh, but I see people just literally draining. They think that the platform hates them. It doesn't. You're just using it wrong. And we just need to get that messaging right to suddenly see the difference. So here's what a typical LinkedIn user does. They will actively build their network you should be building it, right? You should be adding people every single day, every single week into your network. They will then say, I'm gonna post every single day. I'm gonna put a piece of content up every single day. What happens is they hit Monday and Tuesday, but then something happens on Wednesday and miss their post. So they go, oh, I've got, got to do it. I'll do Thursday. And what happens is they do Thursday, and they go, well, that was just an absolute waste of time. Do you know what, screw it. And then they feel guilty two days later. They've not done it, so they then do it on Sunday and they repeat. From that, they generate some new followers, and what they expect is that from the content that they put out there, from the messages that they send, that they then view their LinkedIn profile. And what happens on a typical LinkedIn profile is that you'll have three things in the About Me section, normally one of the three. It's either, if you want to find out more information, book a call, there's a Calendly link in there. Number two is, drop me an email, and they put their email address in there. Or number three is, give me a call, or drop me a DM. One of those three. It varies now. However, the way that behavior is on this platform is that those call to actions no longer work. And the majority of the time, you're losing out an opportunity because of it. So what you've got to do is reframe your process and how you do it. What you need to do is start thinking about content as showcasing the best version of you online. So everything that you put out, put it out with meaning like you've actually got some intent behind it, like you're trying to prove a point. You're trying to showcase something that other people are just missing. And you've got to find yourself where you are feeling a little bit emotionally engaged with some things, right? So whenever I feel passionate about something, excited about something, frustrated, angered, whatever, I use the emotion to create. Whether that's in video, whether that's in writing, Chris's rants are famous on LinkedIn. You go and have a look, I just ramble on for 10 minutes. But they're some of my best performing videos because they're a bit better than vanilla me sitting there awkward behind a screen communicating. Sometimes the best content is when you don't even realize you're being recorded. So one of the, what I do at home with my work setup is I have a camera that just sits permanently on record. It's a memory card nightmare. However, like throughout the day, I come out with like one to two bits of gold on calls. And before, before I did that, I was like, I so wish I was on record, because now I go and recreate it and I look like a robot trying to deliver it again. Whereas in the moment, I'm like at my best version of me. So it's like the best thing that I can ever say to people, like whether it's an old iPhone, a camera, whatever, set it up and whenever you're in flow, whenever you're on camera, try and record it. Because it's the best content you'll ever create when you're in your genius zone or your area of genius, as they say, right? The reality is, when I look at most people's social profiles, the people that I meet in rooms like this aren't the people that I see online. You will have enthusiasm, passion. people will think that you're nice and friendly and you have lots of really great conversations. The problem is you look at social and it's like, well, I see some written posts that, let's be really honest, you don't even really care about and you're writing them right now, so what, have I, what chance have I got as a reader of them? 
And again, this is the reality of behavior because we've just been ingrained into just put content out there. I wanna tell you today, don't just put content out there, put your best content out there and care about it and you'll see the difference it makes. I use this term in, like, in reality because it's really true. Most people use social media for one of two reasons. Sometimes both. One for their own selfish reasons to generate more business, especially LinkedIn, right? They're using it to proactively generate more leads. The most common one is because they're bored. That's why most people use it, to fill time. So what we've got to do is, how do we gain attention when people are bored or they're trying to do it for their own selfish reasons? And what happens with most people's behavior is they try and sell, and Sam's term, they immediately repel, or what they do is they try to overserve and they get the same result. So what we've got to do is find the right balance. When you're looking at content, it's about generating a reaction. That's it. How do we get people to emotionally connect with something that will drive it further? Then your process comes into play. So here's how we do it. It's a bit small. You can see the full copy of the slides online and we'll email them out to you. Um, but from LinkedIn on the left-hand side, you will see it plays 10% of the role of our whole process. YouTube plays another 10%. The combination of both is magic. The YouTube that content that we create, Amy Willett, is podcast content, right? So it goes onto Spotify and iTunes in the exact same way. When I'm having conversations with people, that's where I'm at my best. So podcasting for me is an absolute no-brainer just because of that. Captures it brilliantly for me. From that, all I'm looking to do is move people off of that platform as quickly as humanly possible. I want to move people into my email database so I can actually market to them to a place where I've got control. I use a lead magnet to do it, marketing term. We give away a guide that's got 100 content ideas in it, something that most people want in relation to what we do. Everyone struggles with content, everyone goes and downloads that thing, they get into our database, and from that, either via a LinkedIn event invite or via an email, they'll find their way onto one of our webinars at some point. On average, people attend two to three if they're the right fit. And on the second or third, they end up coming through to an application call. And if they're right, they buy. With all of this, to give you the actual numbers again for it, if I can get 1,000 people to say yes to a LinkedIn event invite, it means that 500 of them will register for Zoom, which will then mean that 250 attend and 10% end up booking this. We convert at about a 95% rate at the point of call because it's set up in the way that we deliver the webinar that way. LinkedIn is just a traffic source. It's nothing else. It's no longer the end-to-end -end sales solution that it once was. All we're looking to do is grab attention and move people off it. Content, LinkedIn events, move people off and drive people into a place where they get to see the best version of you. Can, can I just ask, when you say sure. LinkedIn events, yes. is, that, is the event <coughs> functioning LinkedIn or are you using Zoom? So the LinkedIn event is a function within LinkedIn. When you set it up, there's a tutorial on my YouTube, it shows you how to do it. Um, but when you set it up, you click external link and then you put the Zoom registration link in there. So you proactively, so they're technically, they're not connected legitly, but people will click through and then register. That's how it works. And so what I know is, is that my LinkedIn activity is gonna make me money every single month, just because the numbers tell me it is. And that's where process becomes quite sexy, yes. Do you charge for your webinar? No, free, completely free to go. Um, in, in terms of the way that we deliver it, you can, there's loads of replays of our stuff online. It's quite similar to this presentation, actually. This is just delivered in a bit more of a softer way. Um, but like in terms of the way that we, that we go, it's very much kind of like, just come along. If you like us, great. If you don't, that's also okay. But hopefully I've opened your eyes to some things that you could be doing a little bit differently. So yeah, free. How do you access all those people in order to get them to sign up to your LinkedIn event? Um, that's building the network normally. So content will, will generate more followers, uh, more attention. This is where the stuff that Sam talks about a lot on the LinkedIn side, so getting your profile right, getting your content right. There's loads of stuff out there. I mean, that, those videos there will teach you th th that sort of stuff in a lot more detail than what I could in 45 minutes here for you. Um, but the, the reality is, is network building, content, and then from that, build that your network will then grow, and then you can send your invites out every single week. Yeah. So no advertising, sorry. Not currently, no. So how long is your free event? An hour. 
an hour. And <coughs> how um, long in advance do you? Three weeks. Three weeks for every event. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I, I, again, that is noticed meant to be about LinkedIn. Talk to you about it because it's such a great way of being able to work in partnership as speakers. YouTube is one of the best things that you'll ever, ever start doing. Like literally, the best thing that I can give you to do, I'm gonna cover this in a second, but literally write down all the questions that all you get asked all the time by your customers. Just create a video, three to four minutes long, put it on your YouTube channel, you'll get new traffic every single time. Like it is such a good tool to use. Drive people to your best content. So in direct messages, don't try to go for the kill straight away. Push people to a value piece of content where you're performing really, really well. Those videos literally just play that role for us. And from there you move through. And then there are two questions that you need to look at. Um, there's a site online called answerthepublic.com. I don't know if anyone's heard of it, but um, it basically you type in your subject area and it will give you all the most commonly asked questions. If, only thing, if the only thing you ever did from this, not even on LinkedIn, right? It's the most ridiculous thing. It's just create a video answering those questions and put them out there online, put them out there on a YouTube platform. The amount of search traffic you will get is absolutely insane right now. And that opportunity won't be there forever. It is reducing. So if that's all you ever did was aim to be like the encyclopedia of your subject area, you're going to win a really, really good battle there. So I don't have time to cover this in too much detail, but again, I talk about Caroline a lot because she completely ghosted me for 33 days. And it's our average sales cycle currently, Rapa, when you get this process right. My message is very much, look, I don't wanna to talk to you because I know you don't wanna to talk to me. If social media is something you struggle with, go watch that YouTube video. And if you're struggling with content, here's a guide that you can use. Um, have a great day. It's literally all it is. It's a push away technique in messaging. Something that you again, that template is everywhere on the internet. Everyone's pretty much using it now. However, it's a really, really powerful one because what it is, is it's just offering that, look, if you want it, go over to a place where there's loads of content and from there, they tend to get nurtured into our, it's indoctrination is the marketing term. They get indoctrinated into what we do and then they move through. It's really weird, I know. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's the way that we work it. Um, but from that, 35 days later, we get the message saying, I wanna find more about the academy that you do, bang, straight through. Loved it, signed up. That's the process working in full flow. It's just a process that you can copy and paste and do yourself. So the connections tips are there for you to be able to take. Like think about the, the fact that LinkedIn is just the beginning. Um, there's this tool online, it's a psychology thing. It's very well known, it's called the emotions wheel. Um, if you literally just go and Google the emotions wheel and in your headline of content now that you create, just pick one of those words on the outer ring of that emotions wheel, you'll get on average an extra 1,000 impressions. That's from the stuff that we've been taking from people that have got 600 followers on this platform. Put the emotional adjective in your headline, in the first line of your video, it will gain more attention. It's just a little hack for you. So to finish off with conversion, what you've got to think about is the journey that you're taking your prospects on. So again, the problem is, is that most people think that if you just do that, that form of activity, that everything will form for you. The, re the reason that doesn't work is purely because it's based on luck, that you hit the right person at the right time. We don't work on luck. What we've got to do is realize the fact that the quicker that we can move people away from this platform, the more business we'll generate. Because email marketing is still the best thing that you can ever do. Ironic coming from a person that runs a LinkedIn marketing agency, but all I'm looking to do on LinkedIn is move people off it because I've got no control over what anyone sees on that platform. It's very different to all the others. However, it gives us the opportunity to reach people for free. So we're always going to utilize it while we can do that. So all I'm looking to do is generate attention and drive people to the front end of that process. Now, from our own work that we've done, we utilize three different types of campaign. Now, to go into detail in all of these would be mental right now. I've got about three minutes left for you. However, the biggest one that I've spoken about to you today is event. There are co there's content online around value add and conversation on Sam's LinkedIn profile and on my YouTube channel. There's content there for you to go and watch if you want to find out more about how they work. But all we're looking to do with any of our campaigns is just track the numbers behind our activity. And when we don't get 500 people from the 1,000 converting from LinkedIn event yes to Zoom registration, there's something that's gone wrong. 50% is industry standard. If you don't get the link, something's gone wrong. So rather than looking at the whole process, you just look at that and you go, right, how do I change it? How do I make a subtle difference just to try and get that percentage back up? 
It might be that you've run the event too many times with the same title. It might be the fact that people are saying yes and the date and the time's not right. There's different reasons at different stage along this process that will mean that your percentages will go up. And again, in terms of the details in this, these are the certain people that we work with when it comes to it. And most people have elements of the process that I spoke to you about in place. Now, most people have these gaps in. And again, you can take the photo so you've got it. Donna had these gaps. She was sending messages. She wasn't showing off how good she really is. And she had no clear way of identifying what was working and what wasn't. So what we had to do was, was run an audit, check everything over. And what we did was, now this is over, and I don't mean it to be. However, this is the end-to-end -end process that we run, right? It takes around about two weeks to set up. But what we realized was that Donna's process and the reason why it wasn't converting was because she only had four of those things in place. What we did was, was look at, right, what's the bare minimum that we can implement to get it working? And that was the conversion piece at the end. It was the webinar in this example, but it could have been a demo, could have been an audit, it could have been anything, didn't matter. We implemented that process and then we talked about these key four things. It'll be about two minutes, Amy, if that's okay. So the first thing we did is build out a process. So it's there for you to be able to do. You've got to look at the message that you're doing, spend time on that message and work out what's going to stop people in their scroll. From that, we created a high value lead magnet, something that we give away for free. Put that everywhere on our profiles as our main call to action. Send it out in messages. Again, 10 to 15 minutes sending out messages to get people onto our list every single day. What we then had to tell her to do was stop doing everything else. Just focus on getting this process right. What she was doing was speaking all over the country, running webinars, she was sending loads of messages, she was creating YouTube videos, she was doing TikToks, and it was just overwhelming. Strip it all back and just do that process that you just saw. Again, all you've got to do is look at it, print screen it, do whatever, and implement. Once you've done that, it was about network building. Most people don't know the power of LinkedIn groups. These were useless about two years ago. However, they give the, you the ability to grow your network quickly. Go and find a LinkedIn group with your ideal client in. You can go and just mass connect with all of them and you don't use up all of your invites. So rather than maxing it out on your search limits, you get to bypass the search limits by doing it. Just send 30 to 50 of them a day until LinkedIn tells you to stop. Max it out. It doesn't take that long to do whatsoever. From network building, you can then talk about content. And again, I've spoken about content a lot right now, so I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail. On my profile, that content guide, I can send you a copy of it if you want it. It's got the 100 ideas in if content's something that you struggle with. However, what we've gotta do is realize that that emotions wheel plays a huge part. Utilize it. Utilize emotion, because it's what we react to. It will boost your impressions through the roof and when you don't get the impressions that you're looking for when you put out content and you get tumbleweed don't worry about it just look at it and go what could i do better and go again and repeat and just remain consistently doing it the reach from what zoe got with 900 followers by talking about some of the charity work that she was doing got 133,000 impressions that's beaten my record and i've got 13,000 followers on this platform it's crazy what it gives you and from that, she got investment opportunity from her property business just for it. It was mental in terms of how it worked. And Sam does it all the time with her posts in the exact same way. So when it comes to content, I've spoken to you about this already. Write down all the questions and create the content that answers the questions. From that, use emotion to get it out there and talk about the stuff that your ideal clients are actually interested in. I know it sounds obvious, but ask the questions to them. Find out what they need. Find out what they want and give them what they want. And from there, you'll work in the exact same way. This is all we do. It's just put stuff out there to showcase who we are and why we're so great. Believe it and get it out there. And once you've done that, you can draft your messages in that exact same way that I showed you before. It's just a bit bigger on the screen. Drive people to a high value piece of content, that YouTube video. If you've got multiple, you'll get multiple hours of watch time. The more hours someone spends watching you, the more likely it is that they're gonna buy from you in the future. Give them something for free that they want, like a content guide. Email them, get them to a conversion piece of content and you're off. Getting through and getting your plan in place is what's really important. And from that, within three hours of a workshop, just by running that process, it was six grand in sales. It wasn't bad whatsoever. She didn't even know what she really was doing and talking about when she was doing it. You can ask her, go and message her. She was scared shitless of doing it. <laughs> However, what, just by following it, she got the results. So just to finish off, 
with conversion, and I'll rush through that bit for you. But really, it's about building a process. That's all you've got to do. Work out how you can showcase the best version of you and why people should work with you, and push people down that process as quickly as you can. Use LinkedIn as the traffic source and you move from there. When it comes to lead generation, forget about posting hundreds of pieces of content. The Gary Vaynerchuk thing, we were talking about it before. Posting more is not the answer. Posting better quality versions of you online is what the answer is. Believe it and start showing it. Please stop asking questions about the algorithm. Whoever tells you they know what the algorithm is doing is lying, right? It is not public information. We're all guessing, right? All the reports out there are taken from data and their assumptions. All you've got to do is put your best version of you out there with emotion and it will work, I promise you. So get your product sorted in a way that's packaged that people care about it, put a process in place that works, and then from that, complete those actions. To give you the abbreviation for the process, it's free content plus your lead magnet, plus your credibility piece of content, which in our case is the webinar, and then have your strategy call or your sales call at the end to be able to convert. And if you do anything else, just document what you're doing. Share that you're here. You're doing something very different to the majority of people. Tag people in. My aim is to get a selfie with every single person in this room tonight because if we can tag each other in, we can get a bigger and larger network as we go. I know I've overrun, so I'm not going to take any more of your time. Thank you very, very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>